Welcome to Lesson 6-5, Proportions. This should be pretty straightforward. A lot of things in life are proportional. The more you do something here, the more you get for revenue, the more you work, the more you get for pay, those kind of things. For instance, we'll just do a quick, a quick simple one. I know it's algebra, but we'll go like this. And most of you probably go, well, I know what that is because uh, 2 goes into 4, so this is twice as big, so this is 2 times. Oh, wait a minute. This has to be 1. Here's how we show how to do it. I think this is the best way to do it for all of them. You can do the easy ones in your head, but when you get into harder problems in life, you're not going to be able to do them in your head. 4 times x, it's called the cross product. Not cross canceling. Not cross canceling. Cross product. 4 times x equals 2 times 2. Well, what is 2 times 2? Well, that's 4. What number do you multiply by 4 to get an answer of 4? x has to be 1. You knew that. 1 half is equal to 2 fourths. But it gets a little bit more confusing when you have something like y over 3 equals 10 over 13. You don't add. You don't add. It's a proportion. y over 3 would be the same thing as 10 out of 13. Well, to solve it, the quickest overall, 13 times y equals 3 times 10. What do you multiply 13 by to get an answer of 30? Well, it doesn't go any either way. That's right. Take 30 divided by 13. As a reminder, as a reminder, it's not always the big number divided by the small number. It's the one that you're multiplying by. That's when you've got to get rid of. If 13 times some number is 30, then the backwards, like your fact families from elementary, 30 divided by 13 is your answer. Whatever that turns out to be, 2 point, well, we'll do 2 and 26 4 thirteenths. As a decimal, I don't know what that would be. Well, that's not too bad. Let's get into one of the problems, page 290. 290 in your books, okay? The classrooms at Lincoln Middle School are painted every summer. If, 17 ga if seven gallons of paint are needed to paint four classrooms, how many gallons of paint are needed to paint 16? Seven gallons of paint does four rooms. How many gallons would it need to be 16 rooms? Seven gallons, four rooms. That would be the same rate, same ratio, same proportion as how many out of 16? Now, one of the clues is that the rooms has to go on the bottom. The gallons has to go in the top. Seven gallons, four rooms. How many gallons? Sixteen rooms. Yes, you could see that this is four times as big. I know that. Seven times that, it'd have to be 28, right? Let's do it another way. Call it X, call it Y, call it Q, call it Bob. I don't care. Six time, or Sixteen times seven is four times X. 7 times 16, 42, 112. Divide 112 by 4, 28. If 7 gallons does 4 rooms, then to get 16, that's 4 times as big. It have to be in the same ratio, the same proportion. Well, what's so hard about that? When you get into tougher ones x plus 7 over 3 equals 2 over 5. x plus 7 over 3 equals 2 over 5. Hmm, do problems come up like that? Well, yeah. In math, there's all kinds of problems that come up. What do you do? Same thing, cross multiply. The trouble is, how do you take 5 times x plus 7? How do you take 5 times this, the x plus 7? I know what 2 times 3 is. That's no big deal. Distributed property? 5 times x, and don't forget, most common error, don't forget, 5 times 7, 35, equals 6. Okay? Now what? Just like with our hands-on equations, and I'll probably do a video on that here pretty soon, subtract the 35, undo it, unhook it, do the reverse. 6 take away 35, you've got to be good with fractions, decimals, negatives, going backwards. Negative 29, divide both sides by 5. Negative 29 divided by 5. Let's see, 5.8. How do you know if that's right? How do you know if that's right? Do you ever check your answers? 
negative 5.8. Negative 5.8 plus 7. That's just like 7 minus 5.8. That's 1.2. 1.2 divided by 4 by 3 is 0.4. Guess what 2 divided by 5 is? 0.4. Checks. Works. No problem. Here's what you do in Algebra 1. I know, you're not in Algebra 1. Not yet. x plus 7 over 4 equals 5 over x minus 2. You can't do that one in your head. There's, you can't just think about that and do that unless it's a really easy one. You cross multiply. That one's easy. How do you take x plus 7 times x minus 2? How do you take x plus 7 times x minus 2? It doesn't matter if you take this one times this one or this one times this one. Multiplication is commutative. You can switch them around. Well, we'll leave that up to you because that's a difficult problem. You'd have to understand this thing called FOIL, but that's a later topic. See you Monday.